there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Three Pinot Noirs, two Burgundies, one Chilean. And uh, I think I'm going to, I've, I think I've got them in the right order here, so let's just dig in and see where we get to. Uh, first one is the Wine Society's Exhibition, or oh, the Society's Exhibition, Saint Aubin, uh, made by Henri Proudhon, um, and 2009 vintage. Give it a whirl. Well, it smells light, gentle, um, pretty wine, and um, I, sometimes Burgundy, uh, when, when you use the words like pretty and light about a wine, uh, basically what you're meaning is it's, it's light, it's thin and not very concentrated. But here, well, if, you've got, if you've got this style of Burgundy in a good vintage, 2009 was a good vintage, um, then you get these lovely gentle perfumed wines which are not trying to be um, uh, major full-bodied, full throttle, pass me a goat and I'll eat it all type of wines, but gentle and pretty and it smells like that it's got a gentle cherry raspberry bit of earthiness about it and uh, smells uh, as if i want to to have a slurp and then maybe a bite of something so i like the perfume and i like that red fruit what, what i have against it maybe is when you come to taste it there's a little bit too much of that earthiness. There's a little bit too much of, this, of a slightly green, stalky character. And um, I'm not looking for things that are out and out ripe and out and out um, voluptuous and juicy, but uh, I'm not sure whether I would have liked a little bit of more, more of that character here. So it's, it, it's okay. And um, it, 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 my concern is that, that those tannins and that slight green bitter edge will not soften with time. I'll keep my eye on it for a few a few uh, hours, and if it does, I'll report back. I have a suspicion that it will all be always be in that um, almost there sta stage. And uh, yeah, hey. Let's see whether we get a little more, bit more excitement with the um, next one, which is Louis, Ge uh, Louis, Gevry, Louis Latour, Gevry Chambertin, uh, 2007 vintage. And uh, 2007 is a vintage that uh, is actually quite, if, if you're looking for burgundies that uh, provide the burgundy experience, but you don't have to wait years for, for, it, for, for them to provide it. I found that some really charming, lovely, fleshy, uh, but uh, not too structured wines that are drinking rather nicely now. Let's see if this is one of them. Well, it's showing more of that uh, truffly development, uh, and the fruit is quite warm, plush, soft, friendly, um, and it's on the berries, the cherries, plums, a little bit of the undergrowth character. Feels like it's going to be good. It doesn't feel like it's going to be um, majorly great burgundy, but um, it's basic village wine, and um, uh, for the greatness, you really have to go higher up the scale. The, the scale. But it, it smells, it smells juicy and good. Well, there's this warm, rounded, juicy plumminess about it, um, but uh, maybe what it misses out from, uh, for, for being great Burgundy, misses out on some of the, um, the light, life beyond fruit, life beyond the winemaking. Uh, so it's correct, it's, uh, there's a juiciness about it. Uh, it, it is mature, it doesn't feel like uh, there's any hard edges or any complicated bits that uh, need to unravel. But um, it's, um, it's good but not great. I mean, it's perfectly respectable, um, but... Um, it's, it, the, the difficulty is, I mean, with Burgundy prices being what they are, um, I mean, that's a 23 quid bottle of wine, and I want a little bit more magic from a 23 quid bottle. Hey, let's see whether I get magic from the last one, which I, I can't remember how much this is, but I think it's, uh, it might be it might even be more than 23 quid. Uh, it's Vigna Ventisqueros Heru Pinot Noir. Heru. Um, and it's got a picture of an elf's hat on the uh, uh, on the front label. And a legend tells the story of an, ape, an elf named Heru who secretly lived among the vines of Casablanca. Blah 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 blah. So yes, it's from Casablanca, 2009 vintage. Um, and um, let's give it a whirl. <clears throat> Now, I think the first vintage of this wine was 2007, and uh, I remember tasting it uh, two or three years ago now, and um, thinking that uh, there was good raw material which had been slightly clumsily handled. I feel like they, they'd tried to extract too much flavour from, from the grapes, and they'd also uh, been a bit too heavy-handed with the oak. Stick my nose in here, and there's still a big, warm, juicy roundness. Actually, warm's the wrong word. There's a juicy roundness of flavour. Doesn't feel like they've quite gone over the top in the way that maybe the 2007 vintage was. Uh, there's, there's a softer, more gentle style. Yes, it's still, it still feels like it's got quite a throaty raspberry plum, um, and it's on those red plums, um, 
maybe even even a little bit of the, the peach in there as well um, so it's got those characters but there's also some earthiness coming through uh, maybe it's something to do with vine age maybe it's something to do with maturity of the winemakers and the viticulturalists let's taste it and see where we get to and they've certainly been a little bit more sympathetic with the wine making here um, it is a, it's a different beast from Burgundy. It's a, it's a lot fuller, fleshier, more concentrated style. Um, it, it doesn't feel like... A, a, the, 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 the Louis Latour one has got a little bit more delicacy. This is a, it not, it's still not clumsy, but it's, it's a, a, a certainly more concentrated, richer style and will be too rich for some, um, but uh, I would almost rather have something like that and let it calm down. I don't think the Louis Latour, and okay, maybe 2007 is not the vintage with which to compare uh, the two, uh, but I don't think the Louis Latour ever had that quite that, um, that richness and uh, will never have quite that concentration of flavour and will never have that, um, that appeal. I, I do find that, uh, uh, yeah, maybe they, they have gone a bit over the top, but I do find it a more appealing wine than the Louis Latour. Do you know what? I, I, my favourite wine would probably be a mix of the two, because um, just to calm down a little bit of that uh, uh, over brightness of the first one and uh, or enrich and uh, enrich enriching um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Gevry. Let's see what this one's like. And that's, that's a nice blend, actually. Um, it, you get the delicacy and structure of the first one, uh, and you get that, um, that, that bit of bounce and life of the second one. Um, uh, but uh, I'm not suggesting you go out and buy a bottle of each and uh, mix the two. But um, if you ever do have two Pinots like that, that uh, one, one is slightly on the fey side, one is slightly on the bold side, don't be afraid of, uh, of blending them and seeing if you can do something better. The winemaker's supposed to have done that in, in the first place, but uh, I don't know this one's... This one's my favourite of the four wines I've tried today, even though there are only three bottles. I know what I mean. Hopefully you do. See you soon.